Hello, hello, and autumn equinox blessings to you. Thank you so much for joining today, our soulful gardening wisdom moment. It is always such a joy to be with you, and especially today on this day that is so important and so on so many levels, the turning of the wheel to a new season. So it's a true time of transition. And hi, Kay, nice to see you this morning. Thanks for joining. And um, so today we are going to dive in with some practical gardening guidance about asters and also, of course, some mystical wisdom and a mindfulness practice that you can do with asters in a way that will really benefit you. I am hearing a lot from the asters this season and excited to share with you. So I'm going to just dive right in. Um, so asters are a pretty we see them all over the place, right? You might not necessarily recognize them as asters, perhaps, but these beautiful flowers, they're of a simple flower, um, meaning it's, um, you know, a simple center with, with petals. They're not a complex flower. We see them in woodlands and on roadsides and in prairies and in vacant lots and in gardens. And the reason that they are so... Um, beautiful and abundant and really uh, have so much vitality is because they are self-seeders. They readily self-seed. So they truly are such abundant plants to connect with. Asters are asters and goldenrod are the latest blooming flowers in most parts of the world. And asters are native not only in the United States, but also in other countries throughout the world and have had a long tradition of, of a really meaningful place in people's lives because they are the latest blooming flowers. Hi, Jill. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Happy Equinox. And so the fact that we have this connection with asters as the latest blooming flowers is it's really... Um, you know, it has a lot of, of sacredness associated with it and magic associated with it. In traditions around the world for, throughout history, asters have been associated with the harvest time, with gratitude, giving thanks, um, welcoming and celebrating the abundance of this time of year. And so what a beautiful flower for us to be connecting with today on the autumn equinox. Um, Asters, from an ecological perspective, are incredibly important in nature and in your garden, your native garden, because they are the latest blooming flowers. They provide a critical source of nutrients for all types of pollinators, um, as well as birds and butterflies that are migrating. Just a little while ago, I saw a monarch um, land on our asters and have a little nibble before they flew off to wherever they're going, man, and that is what a miraculous journey they have, right? So asters are a beautiful flower for us to connect with. They provide this wealth of nutrients, but they also provide a refuge for pollinators that are moving through at this time of year, pollinators that are gathering um, the resources and the energy in order to overwinter in our um, native landscapes and that are nearing the end of their lives and that are getting ready to um, lay eggs or other types of things that will um, continue on their livelihood into the next generation. And asters are especially, um, they're especially good at continuing on the next generation themselves because they readily self-seed. The individual plants do not last for very long. They're a relatively short-lived as a plant, a couple of years, but because they self-seed so readily, they will go on and on and on with their abundance and vitality. And the reason that they are able to do this is because they are incredibly generous. Okay, they have such generosity. I mean, just look at the abundance of flowers that each plant puts on. And I have lots more behind me and to the side of me that you can't see. 
something that is super cool about asters to know is that you can see how they are contributing to the to the um, health and vitality of nature because when they are pollinated, the center of their flowers turns from this bright yellow. This one flower has not been pollinated yet, but when they have been pollinated, the center of their flower turns um, kind of like a deep reddish brown. So it's so fun to be able to look at the plant and see how much it has been giving, how many pollinators it has been supporting and contributing to so that they can benefit from these latest blooming flowers in our landscapes. Um, these are shorts aster. They're um, one of several varieties. There's also the smooth aster, the silky aster, New England aster, and several more that are native to our area in the central United States and throughout um, much of especially the eastern United States. So these are a wonderful flower to bring into your uh, native garden, into your soulful garden. They will help you connect with the abundance of the season and literally see the abundance of the season to be able to see all of the generosity and um, wealth of nutrients and support that are being provided by your native garden. A funny little story about asters, when we first planted them, I didn't realize how um, abundant they are and our rabbits loved the new plantings. And when I noticed that they were nibbling all of our asters down, I like got so protective of them. I you know, protected them with cages and did all of these things to make sure that they would survive. And little did I know, they were absolutely fine. <laughs> they were absolutely fine. They went on to flourish, in fact, after the bunnies nibbled them down. It, I think it put so much more energy into their roots. And when they did, um, when they were able to put on flowers, they were abundant with flowers that season, which means abundant with seeds, right? So we have now had so many asters self-seed within our garden and what a joy that is to see. Um, from a mystical perspective, of course, all of this is so connected with abundance. And this time of the year, the autumn equinox is a wonderful time to be focusing on gratitude, abundance, and balance. And asters provide us with a lot of wisdom about healthy balance. There's no better place to witness healthy balance than in a native garden, in a native landscape, where you can see how the flowers and all of the creatures that benefit from these plants are able to not only survive, but truly thrive because there is a balance of giving and receiving. The asters are so generous in giving in giving their pollen, in giving their nutrients, and look at how much they receive. All of these pollinated flowers that will be able to produce seeds for the next generations. So asters are really such a, a wonderful symbol of this abundance, and you can connect with this as well. Because so many of us, especially women, we give, 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 give. We're caretakers and caregivers, and we're always giving, right? It is truly in our nature. It is something that especially women are um, drawn to do, and we often forget to take the time to receive, and we often forget that we need to receive in order to fill our cups, right, so that we can give more. We tend to focus on wanting to give more and oh why can't I give more and I, I'm so tired but I still need to give of course we need to receive and so nature and our asters are providing a beautiful message of the importance of not only giving with generosity and love but allowing yourself to receive and nature provides so many ways for us to reconnect with that so that you can reconnect with the balance of giving and receiving in your own life, so that you can experience the joy of not only surviving, but thriving and contributing and receiving. 
contributing to the expansion of everyone and everything around you, but also receiving in order to expand yourself and to deepen your connection with yourself, with your inner wisdom, with your beautiful intuition, and with all of the healing that nature provides. So um, another thing that I really wanted to mention is that our native gardens and our asters provide a beautiful place of refuge for pollinators. This morning I took little videos of several bees that slept on our asters overnight and it was a little chilly tonight for our first morning of autumn. It was in the high 40s when I woke up and as I was walking around the garden and connecting with the asters this morning, I saw lots of little bees that were still sleeping on the asters. And it just brings so much joy to our hearts to see how our native gardens can provide this safe place, a refuge for so many creatures, so many aspects of nature that need our help now more than ever. And this is just another way for us to connect with that energy of receiving. This really fills our hearts to see how what we are contributing to the world, what we are offering to nature to help heal nature, we are also healing ourselves. We are receiving such joy and awe and wonder and love and connection, connection with ourselves and connection with Mother Earth. So for today's mindfulness practice, I encourage you to take the time to look around in nature. It, you may see asters or goldenrod that are blooming with their vibrant yellow blooms or something else in nature that you see that really helps you step into that place of balance, that place of receiving and giving, the place of giving but also filling up yourself and knowing that nature is abundant in messages like this for you. The more that you can align with this, the more that you can witness and acknowledge the balance that is within nature and that you can contribute through your native gardens, through your soulful gardens, you're able to step into this place of balance within yourself and you'll be able to more easily and more readily recognize when you need to receive more, when you need to fill your own cup and the beauty and the healing that is found there for you. I hope that you enjoyed today's message from the Asters. If you are interested in learning more about native plants, I encourage you to click the link in bio to check out my free guide five native plants that help you ease your anxiety. And these are five plants that have wonderfully healing textures that can be used in gardens throughout the United States and that provide so much vitality and healing, not only to nature, but also to you. So I'm wishing you a beautiful autumn equinox. You're welcome, Kay. Thank you again for joining. And I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday at 9.30 Central Time, 9.30 a.m. Central for another Soulful Gardening Moment. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day.